This is an example of difference and differences estimation or diff in diff. So here uh, we're again going to use a data set from the Woldridge package and we'll need some other packages for other things later. Um, the particular data set is this SLP7581 where SLP is short for sleep and then 75 and 81 refer to two different years in the data. So it's a panel data set. We're observing individuals at two points in time, six years apart. So I've loaded that data. Um, what I'm going to do next is just uh, keep certain observations just to simplify the setup a little bit. Uh, so one of the variables we'll look at is this YNG, which stands for young, and then KID, kid. Um, so for each individual, there's a one or a zero, depending on whether they have young kids, young children in their house uh, in 1975, and then again in 1981. Um, and so that young kids is going to be our treatment variable and then the amount of sleep somebody gets every week is going to be the outcome variable or the y variable uh, so just for simplicity i'm going to only keep individuals who did not have young kids in 1975 um, and then some of them did and some did not in 19 81. I'm going to take that. Then this next line of code just sets our x1 variable similar to the textbook as whether or not somebody had young kids in 1981. So x1 is equal to 1 if you're in the group that eventually has young kids and x1 is equal to 0 if the individual did not have young kids in either 1975 or 1981. We can generate that variable. We can see, uh, unfortunately, there's only 16 individuals who match uh, the criteria of not having young kids in 1975 and then switching to having young kids in 1981. Um, so we can still run our estimate, uh, but we'll probably have fairly large standard errors. Um, I'll set this i variable just like the i subscript uh, to keep track of which individual is which, just for uh, showing you the data set in a little bit. Um, now, I'm going to do a little magic. So the way the data set looks right now, you can click on it from this environment tab over in this pane. The data set is DF. And we can see there's one row per individual. And then within that row, it shows both the 1975 and the 1981 values. Now, what I want it to look like to better match with the textbook notation is uh, to have a different row for 1975 and for 1981, so that there are two rows per individual, one for each year. So I'm going to use some uh, magic function that took me a little bit of time to figure out, but seems to do what we want. Um, and then this x2 is the time dummy that's equal to 1 for 1981 and equal to 0 for 1975. So I'll create that. Um, and then I'll just keep only the variables we want. And then we can take a peek at our new data set. So you see now here's i, that's which individual it is. So individual one 
has observations in both the first row and the second row. So the first row is individual one in 1975, that year. The second row is individual one in 1981, it's a different year. You can see that particular individual happened to sleep a lot more in 1981 than 1975. Uh, this X1 is set to zero in both cases because individual one never has young children. Uh, X2 is set to one in 1981 and zero in 1975. Now if we scroll down a little bit, we can find uh, somebody somewhere. with. There they go. There we go. Uh, so this individual eight does not have young kids in 1975, but does have young kids in 1981. That means they're part of the treated group. So because of that, their X1 is equal to one, regardless of the time period. This X1 is the treatment group indicator, whereas X2 doesn't care about which individual it is, it's just the time indicator. So that's uh, how it works out. And then of course we'll add the interaction between X1 and X2. It's only equal to one when both are equal to one. Uh, so that's what the uh, data set looks like that now will run the diff and diff with as my comment suggests. So, oops, don't do that. So here I'll run the OLS with the LM function like usual. Uh, so again, sleep, nap, SLP, NAP is the outcome variable. That's how much sleep did somebody get over one week as measured in minutes. Uh, so the numbers will be big, like 3,000, 4,000. Um, and then there's the tilde, and then this x1 asterisk x2 tells it to include, uh, in addition to an intercept as usual, an x1 term, an x2 term, and the interaction between the two. And that's exactly what we want when we're running diff and diff. Uh, so now we can use some of those functions that have been discussed in the textbook to see the output with heteroscedasticity, robust uh, standard errors, and everything. Uh, so you can see first, uh, just focusing on the estimates. Uh, so you could think about in the textbook, okay, the intercept in this sort of two dummy variable interaction model is the same as the sample mean in 1975 for individuals without young kids. Um, so that's what this 3385 means, a little over 3,000 minutes per week of sleep for individuals without young kids, uh, sorry, who never have young kids in either year and in 1975. Um, and again, you can think about the interpretation of the uh, coefficient on x1, the group dummy, as well as x2, the time dummy, um, in terms of mapping those to the CEF values also. And then in particular, we'll focus on this last term here. This is the interaction term. So the colon in R refers to uh, the interaction or just multiplying x1 times x2. You can see the estimated coefficient there is 219.5 minutes per week. Um, and again, that's referring to this difference in differences. So it's comparing the amount, well, let's go back up here. So X1, remember, was the, do you ever have young kids dummy? Um, so you can see in 1975, people who in the future will have young kids slept a little over 50 minutes more than individuals who will not have young kids even in the future. 
Um, and so this 219 says if we compare that difference between kids and no kids in 1981, it's 219 minutes larger than the difference between the will have kids and will not have kids groups in 1975. Which takes a lot of words to explain, but hopefully you're tracking with me here. Um, so that's a little strange in that it's suggesting that actually having young children is increasing the amount of sleep that the adults get. Uh, but when we look over here at the standard error, we can see it's 137.7. Uh, uh, so there's a lot of uncertainty about this estimate. And again, that sort of stems from the fact that we really only have 16 treated individuals in our sample. Uh, if we look down further at the 95% confidence interval here, uh, we can see that uh, beta 3, that interaction coefficient, the confidence interval it does include negative numbers, also includes much larger positive numbers. Uh, so really we just have a lot of uncertainty and zero is in the confidence interval. So we wouldn't really be too surprised even if zero were the uh, true value. Uh, so using the same data set, slightly different example, we'll skip this one. Uh, we could think about what if we look at the same outcome variable, but we think about the treatment as becoming not married. So we start with only individuals who initially in 1975 are married, and then we see what's the difference uh, for those who in 1981, six years later, are not married compared to those who remain married. Uh, so I'll run some of the setup code. We'll see here, we still only have 22 treated individuals, so we'll probably have pretty large confidence interval again. Um, other than that, basically the same code, just using these marriage dummies instead of the uh, young kids dummies. We'll set up that data set. Uh, again, the structure of the data set is the same as before. So two rows per individual, one for each year. You can see the different amounts of sleep they get. Uh, we can see, uh, I should have said, I, I switched it. So uh, if you start married and then later are not married, we consider that as being treated. So I want to know what's the average treatment effect on the treated of becoming unmarried uh, for whatever reason. Um, so this first individual has their uh, treatment group dummy set to one because they indeed move from being married to being not married. Whereas the second individual, they remain married. So they're the sort of control group for the untreated group. Um, and again, the time dummy just switches off, on, off, on. So same structure as before, just now we're looking at um, moving from married to unmarried as the treatment. So you can do the same thing, use OLS to run the difference and differences estimation, and then look at the output with these uh, heteroscedasticity robust uh, standard errors and confidence intervals. Um, so we can see now in this estimate column, um, again, the intercept is, is the same or very similar, um, but now since we're looking at a different treatment. Um, now we have a negative uh, estimated interaction coefficient. That's our beta hat three is about um, a decrease of 100 minutes. So we can see by looking at the x1 coefficient, the beta one, uh, that's about minus 100 minutes per week. That's saying in 1975, 
if we compare individuals who in the future will not be married to the individuals who remain married, uh, the individuals who in the future will be unmarried are sleeping less by about 100 minutes per week. Um, alternatively, if we looked at just the X2 coefficient, the beta 2 or beta hat 2, that's saying if we only look at the individuals who start married and remain married, they're sleeping about one hour per week less in 1981 than in 1975. Um, and again, this minus 99 or minus 100 interaction coefficient here is comparing the uh, either the time difference for the treated group to the time difference for the untreated group or uh, comparing the treated untreated difference in 1981 compared to 1975. Um, and just to peek down here, we can see, yes, we still do have a lot of uncertainty. Our 95% confidence interval goes from about minus 400 to positive 200. Uh, so if the true value were zero, we shouldn't really be surprised. Uh, if the true value were plus or minus three hours, we still wouldn't be surprised. So really, we, we don't know a whole lot. We have a lot of uncertainty still, although this point estimate is still our best guess given the data we have. Uh, so just to finish by looking at the... Uh, interpretation of that interaction coefficient again. Uh, here's the figure from the textbook. So instead of treated city and other city, treated city is now the treated group of individuals who were married in 1975 but unmarried in uh, 1981, which is the after period. Um, so there uh, changing over time, and then other city is the individuals who are married before and married after, so both in 75 and 81. And so we can sort of see how much uh, six years later, what the sleep difference is for the sort of control group, those who remain married, and compare that to the time difference for the treated group, those who become unmarried, and sort of subtract it like you see here. And this difference is the minus 100 minutes per week. Um, or again, you could think of it as comparing the uh, treated, those who will become unmarried to those who will remain married in 1975 and comparing them in 1981 and looking at the difference in those differences. Um, either way, you get this minus 100 minute per week uh, estimate.